Hey everybody. Today what we're going to do here is knock the heat spreader off of this old processor by using the up and coming hammer and vice method which at first sounds insane but is actually very easy and efficient of removing the heat spreader off your processor. Now this chip here is an old Pentium 4 back before the hyper threading era and it's fairly beat up uh, bent pins everywhere, it's damaged on the side, it's been kind of tossed around as scrap. And in the early days, these heat spreaders were tacked on to the processor with epoxy around the inside edges of the uh, heat spreader. And the chip, the processor itself in the middle, was covered in thermal paste with the heat spreader put on top. Now, starting with the hyper threading Pentium 4s all the way up to the Sandy Bridge core series Intel used solder which made everything a lot easier for overclocking and, and keeping the thermal paste inside from drying out causing temperatures to skyrocket however starting with the Ivy Bridge chips and the Haswell chips from Intel they've gone back to using paste so this method is really easy on removing that paste getting the heat spreader off so you can place it with a more high quality thermal paste or using a uh, one of those new kind of liquid thermal paste methods I mean liquid metal sorry and so how this works is you need your vise a nice soft piece of wood like a nice soft pine and of course a hammer which for this I'm going to be using a ball peen here now what you want to do just take your chip and place it down into the vise where it just rests right on top of the board as seen there so the vise doesn't squeeze the actual PCB but it squeezes the heat spreader just a little bit as seen here and you can pull it closer so it just kind of sits right in there and you'll want to do this with the IVs and the Haswells as well so we'll kind of move this into the middle. Now keep in mind if your processor uses solder, this method will absolutely destroy the chip because it'll just rip the processor off inside. So you don't you don't want to do that for that. And confirmed, the new Ivy Bridges and the Haswells do not use solder. So this will be safe for them. So what we'll want to do is get this nice in here. Tighten the vise. Give it a nice squeeze. We don't want to make sure we damage this guy at all. And he's nice and snug in there now. And keep in mind it's squeezing the heat spreader, not the chip. So there's no pressure going on the board yet. Now what we'll do is take our nice soft piece of wood here and put it right up against the chip, the board itself. You can see here. So what we'll do is hit the other end of this board with the hammer and what it will do is move basically break the epoxy loose and free the top now we're going to hit it about two or three times to actually break it loose and then we will uh, by hand pull the top off so let me get the camera set up here for you see about right there We'll take our board, put it up against the chip, take our hammer, give it a few good whacks here. I can hit it, not hit my hand here. Now that's <laughs> a bad example. And probably why you might want to put a pillow behind the chip, and it's a good thing this one's dead, but that thing came off a lot a lot easier than it should have. See here, now your heat spreader. And I've seen online and read where people have been putting anti-static mats behind it, so just in case what just happened will catch your chip, and it won't land on the garage floor like it just did for me. And I'll loosen this up. So as you see here, there's the epoxy line going around the heat spread. 
and the thermal paste used inside which move my thumb here is dried and flaky already so this stuff's not really useful anymore it's supposed to have a slight moist tendency so there's a the heat spreader and the actual processor itself here you see the epoxy going around and the actual physical chip with the uh, thermal paste here so what you will do now is just clean this off use some uh, good uh, thermal paste removing cleaner clean this off and put a much nicer thermal paste on it and reseat it back into your computer so for example we reseat this back into the machine take the heat spreader clean this side up as well place it back on top basically follow the proxy you don't have to glue it on if you do it correct here as so and then put your heat sink back on and have it pressed back down and the actual heat spreader itself won't move and uh, that is kind of a quick and efficient way of removing chip top here and again it's it's much safer if you put a uh, backing behind it just in case that happens but with the bigger chips and newer ones since the epoxy here is a lot older what will happen is it'll you'll hit it about twice and then you'll actually see the chip do this a little bit just kind of break free then you'll take it out of the vise and just with your hand grab the chip and just kind of pull the heat spreader right off of it and I'm pretty sure if we were to bend all the pins back this guy would work just fine but again get a nice mat with like, like just put a pillow with an anti-static bag on, uh, over it in front to catch it kind of like a uh, baseball mitt and you'll be good so that that there is a 2001 2.8 gigahertz Pentium 4 mind-blowing anyway that's all for today take care